Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about passing a form as a variable to a subroutine or a function. So you can send the actual form as an object to your code and it can do stuff based on whatever form it gets. Today's question comes from Clara in Pearland, Texas, one of my Platinum members. Clara says, I have a field called is active on several of my forms, which can relate to customers, orders, products, and various other types of data. Is it possible to create a global function to set the form's background color to gray if the current record is not active? I would prefer to use a global function to avoid duplicating the code across multiple forms. That's very smart, Clara. We want to use a global procedure um, to prevent having to duplicate the same code over and over and over again in multiple forms. And if it's the same thing, if it's just look at is active, and if so, set the form background to gray, then you can use that same code across multiple different forms if you know how to pass a form as a variable. And I say procedure because you wouldn't need a function for this because technically a function returns a value. I mean, it doesn't have to return a value, but usually when you're talking about a function, it returns a value. A subroutine does not. And both of those together are collectively called procedures. Yes, I know I'm nitpicking, but part of my job is to teach you guys stuff. So that's trivia. Between you and me, functions just fine. I call them functions all the time. This also came up today in the forums. Richard Van Wagner had a very similar question. That's when I tend to make videos out of stuff is when two or three or even more people ask the same question. So I, I he posted this and then I'm like, wait a minute. Clara posted something a little while back. So let me... Let me put a video together, but he's got the same, basic same situation. He wants to say, okay, I got the same thing going on in multiple forms. How do I do it? And now Richard's mistake was he's trying to use me in a public global function, which can't do that because me is only for forms and reports. It's that specific object. And the global module has no idea what me is. There's no me object, right? And of course, then the guys chimed in. Adam came in first with how do you do it? You're, we're going to pass it as a form, as a form variable. Kevin posted some code very similar. I was going to use active form, but we'll discuss active form in a minute. Uh, Sammy posted something. So let's take a look at what we have to do to get this to work. Now, first of all, this is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, you're going to need to know some VBA. So if you're new to VBA, if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this first. It'll get you started in about 20 minutes. We're going to use the on current event. That's how you trigger something when you move from record to record. It also fires when the form opens for the first record. So go watch this. We're going to create our own global function. Well, technically it's going to be a subroutine, but watch this if you want to learn how that works. And go watch this video on variable scope and visibility. The same thing applies to subs and uh, functions as well. There's a scope of a function or a subroutine that it only works with a particular form, like within that form, or it can work with the entire database, right? There's global and then there's local. So go watch this too if you're confused about that. These are all free videos. They're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and then come on back. Okay, so here I am in the Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website. Let's go into the customer form. Now I already have a field called is active. Let's use that one. Now let's first write this as if it's going to be just for this form and then we'll port it over to a global function. Or I'm gonna probably say function throughout the whole video, but it's technically a subroutine. Um, all right, so let's go into design view, and we want this to run when we move from record to record and when the form first opens. So we're gonna put it in the on current event. Come over here, dot, dot, dot. Okay, and we're gonna say in here, if not is active, right? That's the name of the field, if not is active. I try not to write stuff that's not whatever, but in this particular case, it's okay. All right, then what are we gonna do? We're gonna set the background color of the form to gray. Now, forms themselves don't have background colors. The sections in the form do. So we're gonna set the detail section background to gray. Okay, and that's gonna look like this. Me dot section zero, zero is the detail section, dot back color equals whatever color you want. I like to use RGB. Let's make it 100, 100, 100. And if you're not familiar with the sections and with the RGB function, I've got videos on those, of course. I'll put links down below. This here will be like a, a medium gray. It's a value from zero to 255. Okay, otherwise, 
If it is active, we're going to set it to some other color. Let's do like a bluish color. We'll go, uh, let's see, this is red, green. We'll make this brighter. So 255 blue, blue-ish. Okay, so it's going to check the value of is active. Blue if it's true, gray if it's false. Always throw in a quick debug compile. Come back out, meow. Let's close her. Open her back up again. All right, there we go. There's that bluish color, right? And blue and gray. See? And blue again. Okay, that's working. All right, so that's how you do it for one form. Now, I want to do it for other forms as well. Let's say the orders form. Let's say on the order form, we can change this guy as well. If this is, well, we got a field here called paid. So let's just make it work, first of all, for just this one form. But I'm going to take that code and we're going to cut this code out, snip it, and we're going to go over to our global module, which is out here. Okay. These global modules, the stuff that's in here can work with any object in the database. All right. If it's in your forms module, which is where we were a minute ago, this thing, right? You're in the customer forms module. This code only works in this form. Okay. And this, and this module here can use me as an object because me is whatever form you're on, All right? There's global modules or database level modules, we should call them, right? Then there's form level modules and report level modules. And those only work with the form or report that they're in, all right? Global module here. So I'm gonna come down here, we're gonna paste this in here. Let's give it a name. Let's call it public sub uh, change background. All right, let me just move the end sub down underneath it down there. Okay. Okay, now, save it, yes. All right, let's give it a debug compile now and see what happens. Has no idea what is active is. Okay. It's also going to have no idea what me is. Right? If you were to rem this stuff out and just have that and do a debug compile, it's going to say, I got no idea. Invalid use of the me keyword because you can't use me in a global module. So let's put that back. All right. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to tell change background what form we wanna apply this stuff to. Now, as a side note, Kevin and I both discovered this in the forums we were talking about it. Initially, I was gonna try to use screen.active form, but you can't because when the on current event runs for the first time, the form doesn't technically exist yet. It'll work the second time after that, moving through the records, but that first time that it loads, it won't work. I was going to do a whole separate video on, on active form. I got another video coming out on active form in the future. And I've covered it in a bunch of lessons. But for this one, we have to specifically tell this subroutine what form we want to do stuff to. So I'm going to send in F as a form. It's an object variable of type form. Okay, we're familiar with strings and longs and date times and currency and all that stuff. Well, there's object variables too, like form. You can actually say, this is a form that I'm telling you. Okay, now we just have to refer to the stuff down here as being part of that form. Okay, now is active is a field on the form. So here's how you'd refer to that. It's going to be F and then in parentheses and quotes, just like that. That's how you refer to a field on that form F. Just like you'd say F first name or F, you know, customer sense or any of those fields. Okay, and this is going to be super easy. Watch this. Me is technically that form talking about itself, right? All you got to do now is switch this to F. That's it. F dot section zero. Okay, now compile this. It compiles fine. Save it again. All right, now we just got to tell the customer form. Let's cl I can close this and get back to it here. Okay, now here in the, in the form current for the customer form, okay, now I'm going to say change background me. What is me? Me is the form that you're in, right? The customer form. Change background me is going to send this as a form variable to change background and do that stuff. Okay. Save it. Again, debug compile. Make sure it's working. Okay. All right. Let's close it and open it again. And let's move through the fields or the records. Oh, look at that. It's working. It's working, right? And all you had to do in here, right? In the on current event was say change background me. 
Okay, now there's still a couple things we got to do here. First of all, we're going to make it work with another form as well. Okay, we're going to make it also work with our order form. Now, order form doesn't have an is active, but it has is paid. So let's do the same thing with the order form using that field. We'll use a different field name. And also, as you'll note, the customer form, the original design color of it was like a light blue. This guy's green. I don't want to always use the same colors, right? So we'll come in here in the change background right here, and I'll tell you how to change this to whatever the default design color of that form was. So every form can still have its own color, and you don't got to worry about changing that in your code. That'll be cool too. And we will tackle both of those things in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel for part two. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because one of the benefits of being a member is you can watch stuff before it's available to the public. So yeah, come and check it out. But that's gonna do it for today. There's your tech help video. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. 
Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.